Good afternoon, everyone. Wake up. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to, to this very special occasion. Thank you for, thank you all of you for being here. You're very special for um, Farzan and Stephanie. Uh, and if you're in this room, that's because you're very loved by them. Um, before we continue, I'd like to uh, make a couple of announcements. Uh, please, no crossing once the ceremony starts. Um, the people filming, they don't want anybody interfering with the hallways. And uh, also a reminder to put your phone on silent, please. Um, also, we're in a church, and this is a service where two people come before God to get uh, his blessing for his uh, new marriage. So welcome, everyone. Let's enjoy the ceremony and have fun. God bless you all.
with a big smile. woman in marriage. Come right up. Remain standing when we ask the Lord, the Lord's blessing on this wedding. Let us bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, even before we talk about the joyous time that we're going to have together, we want to invoke the presence of your Holy Spirit. This that we do is for your glory and honor. We ask you to be present and unite these two hearts into one flesh. We pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, the great day is here. <laughs> it finally came. And I am so happy that both of you have chosen to come before the Lord to unite and make this matrimony by the blessing of God. I want to share with you today a special prayer and it's always played and sung in weddings, the Lord's Prayer. But today, I'm going to give it to you as a gift of your wedding. We all know this prayer by heart. Jesus taught it. Matthew 
chapter 6. And you know what? This beautiful Bible, it's both in Spanish and English. So I'm going to read it in both languages if you allow me. All right? Y Jesús les dijo, Vosotros pues oraréis así. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, sea tu nombre santificado, que tu reino venga pronto, que se cumpla tu voluntad en la tierra así como se cumple en el cielo. Danos hoy el pan que necesitamos para este día. Y perdónanos nuestros pecados, así como nosotros hemos perdonado a aquellos que pecan contra nosotros. No nos dejes caer en tentación, sino líbranos del maligno. Porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria por todos los siglos. Amén. Now you might as well start learning some Spanish <laughs> if you haven't by this time. <laughs> well, here it is, just in case you did not understand. And the Lord said unto his disciples, Ye therefore shall pray like this, Our Father in heaven, may your name be hallowed. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth just as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, Anita and Sarfan, this prayer is called the Lord's Prayer, but actually we should call it the home prayer, the marriage prayer, the husband and wife prayer. Did you notice that in this prayer, everything is in plural? You cannot pray this prayer by yourself. It says, our Father. It doesn't say my Father. And then it says, give us this day our daily bread. It doesn't say give me the bread. And then it says, and forgive us our sins as we forgive our debtors. And let us not fall into temptation but deliver us from evil. So it has to be prayed together. And this is one thing I'm going to ask you as you come and form your marriage. Do not stop praying together. You know, Stephanie, you were telling me how you fell in love. <laughs> His gentleness, the way he treated you, it just made you fall in love with him. But you told me that what you liked about her is that she inspired in you closeness to God, to come closer to Jesus. So now you're going to start this journey with Jesus as the rock bottom and you will build your marriage upon Jesus Christ. This prayer has seven petitions, seven requests. And in those seven requests, it will include everything that you ever needed or wanted. Just seven requests but it includes, it embraces all our needs and wants. 
the first three have to do with God and the last four with us that's the way it should always be first God and then us in the very same chapter of Matthew where this prayer is recorded I think the very last verse of that chapter says seek ye the kingdom of God first and above all and live righteously and he will give you everything else that you need so if you put the kingdom of God first everything else will be added unto you so the first three requests it begins by saying our father which art in heaven and then it says hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done three requests let your name be hallowed what does it mean for our fun to hallow God's name to revere his name how do we hallow his name how do we make it holy Yes, you hallow God's name by giving him the place that he deserves in your home. You hallow God's name but make him f by making him first in everything that you do. And you hallow God's name, you make his name holy, but by being yourself holy. You cannot sanctify the name of God unless you yourself sanctify your lives to God. Make his name holy means to live in such a way that it'll bring glory to his name. The second request, thy kingdom come. As you make this little nest of love, one with each other, remember, that the main purpose of marriage, because in the beginning, it was God's idea from the very beginning. It was he that made him that said, it's not good for man to be alone. And you know, it even says that the one that made him united them. He married them. The first marriage was not done in a beautiful church like this. It was done in the Garden of Eden. And it says here in Matthew 19 that they asked Jesus, is it okay for us to divorce? <laughs> that was the actual question. It says, should a man be allowed to divorce his wife whenever he wants? And Jesus answered, haven't you read the scriptures? They record that from the beginning, God made them male and female. And he said, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one flesh. Since they're no longer two, but one, let no split apart, let no one split apart what God has joined together. He that united them, notice that it says what God has united. He made marriage. The only two institutions that come to us from the Garden of Eden before the entrance of sin is marriage and stays until this day. People don't want to go into that. Many people just shackle up. They live together and they don't look, they don't request, they don't beseech the blessing of God. 
but you are both Christians and you want God to unite you into one flesh. So he that made them said that two shall be one flesh. Let no man separate what the Lord has united. So the fact that you've come to this place to be married, you could have just stayed with a civil ceremony. But you know the same judge that marries you can divorce you, right? <laughs> but not a minister, not God. This is meant for life. And by speaking with Anita, she told me that she knows this is for life. She's so sure, and far fun you are too. The Lord has brought you together, and he'll keep you together. The closer you come to Jesus, he's the center, the closer you'll come to each other. Now, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. It means that this marriage is not only to have your little nest of love, is to help you prepare for the coming of the kingdom of Jesus. This is a school where you will learn to develop a character that is worthy of heaven. So you will help him. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say this, but she thinks you're already perfect. <laughs> but basically, you will discover things that he needs he still needs to work on we all have defects of character and you will help him and you with that gentleness that the Lord gave you will help her so that you will both develop that character and be ready for the kingdom of God the prayer is let your kingdom come soon and as Adventists we know that the coming of the Lord is very soon and we are to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord the third request is our Father which, is, which art in heaven hallowed be thy name has to be with his name first with his kingdom second your kingdom come your will be done are you willing to do God's will in your marriage? You see, it's not a problem of if heaven does his will. It says, your will be done on earth as it is already done in heaven. Did you know that this earth is the only place in the universe where the will of God is not followed? And what are the consequences? This is the world we live in. So much sorrow so much grief you can avoid all that by doing God's will in your life asking him every day what is your will O Lord Stephanie don't let this man leave your home every day without praying together he's too good looking to go outside <laughs> before he you ask the Lord to protect him. And of course, when you pray together, your hearts will stay together. Put God first and everything else will come. The last four requests, they actually embrace everything that you need or would ever want. You say, just four? I've got so many things on my list. Well, first of the four last requests, Give us this day our daily bread. In other words, be content with what the Lord gives you and that will bring happiness. It's not all that this world can give you. It's be content with what the Lord gives you. And ask for this day, not for tomorrow. This is why it says, give us this day our daily bread 
in the same chapter that that prayer is mentioned, it says at the end of the chapter again, why do you worry for other things? Notice, don't worry about tomorrow. Verse 34, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So ask the Lord to give you what you need today and be happy with what the Lord gives you. And that will bring happiness into your life. So give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, our trespasses. Hmm. Is there anything to forgive? Not with her, huh? <laughs> well, you will find out very soon <laughs> that you will have to start learning to forgive and to ask to be forgiven. That's why it says, forgive us our trespasses just as we forgive those that sin against us. The art of forgiveness is the art of Christianity. It's the base of our religion. Jesus came to this world to bring us forgiveness. And we need to forgive each other. You will find out very soon, if you haven't found out yet. You just said, no, no, nothing to forgive on her. But you will find out that there'll be many things. Some days, you won't want even want to go to the same bed together. But if you remember that if you forgive, you are forgiven in the measure that you're willing to forgive. The Lord will forgive you as much as you're willing to forgive each other. The next request is don't allow us to fall into temptation. Oh, there are so many temptations. But in marriage, keep your eyes focused on her and only her. Do not allow us to fall into temptation. There's never going to be anything better than her in your life. And that same goes for you. All temptations fall away when Jesus is the center of your life and your love for each other stands strong. And the very last request, you remember all six so far? You do. They're not that hard. <laughs> Hallowed be thy name. It has to do with the name of God, the kingdom of God, and the will of God. First three, our relationship with God. The last four, our relationship with each other. With everybody, actually. And see, the third one is do not allow us to fall into temptation. That can be spelled by the word faithfulness. Faithfulness. And the last one is do not, it, it says, spare us from the evil one, or from evil. In, in Spanish, it says, from the evil one. But in English, it's from evil. What is evil? Yes. You see, everything in this world is evil because we live in an evil world. But the Lord will spare you from evil if you do all the other ones. If you honor his name, if you revere his name above everything, if you seek his kingdom, and if you are willing to do his will, he will guard you from the evil one. If you request every day, Lord, make me content with what I have, you will not envy what others have. And if you pray every day, Lord, do not 
allow us to fall into temptation. You see, the last request, guard us from evil, will always be a reality in their life. Just seven requests, but so powerful. But don't forget that the prayer does not end there. How does it finish? For thine is the glory, the kingdom. The power and the glory. You see, again, the kingdom of God has to come first. And if you put God's kingdom first, everything else will fall into place. But also the power is his. You're going to do just right now in about a minute some of the most solemn vows that two people can make on this earth. They're not any stronger, those vows, than your force of will. And sometimes that's not very strong. The power is in God. Thine is the power. So hold on to Jesus. Just like you're holding on to each other, hold on to Jesus that he will give you the power to live by those vows that you're ready to make. And then it says, and the glory. Always give him the glory for everything. You've accomplished a lot. The Lord has blessed both of your families. You've, you've, you have wonderful families on each side. Actually, this is great because we're uniting two different cultures. But each one has so much to bring into this relationship. You've already learned some of the things that he stands for. And he already knows some of the things that your family stands for. And when you put those two strengths together, oh, you will have a win-win marriage. So as we're ready to make those vows, remember, Jesus is the foundation every successful marriage. Allow him to unite you. He that made them, join them together. So now, you're ready for those vows. Have you practiced them? <laughs> All right. All right. So here we go. You start with those vows. Yes, we need a mic right up here for them. Mine? Okay, okay. Who will go first? You'll hold the mic and she'll start. Great. I've heard many people say that they're surprised to be at the altar with their significant other. That is not the case for me. I knew. <laughs> I knew from the moment I met you that you were the one. Hmm. I love that you are not only my best friend, but my number one fan and my bodyguard too. I love how your immense strength and willpower propels you through life, and I am so honored to go on the journey with you. You are beyond my wildest dreams and the mercy God gave me on this earth. I thank God every day for bringing us together, and I know that he will help me keep these vows. I vow to choose to love you every day, from now until eternity. I know that we are both imperfect and I vow to give you the same grace that you give me. I vow to keep a safe, secure, and loving home that you can rejoice in coming home to every day. I vow to laugh at all of your jokes and tell you all of mine even if they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I vow to help build your dreams and help you look for new ones. You are the absolute love of my life. And I love you now and for eternity. Amen. So wonderful. All right, Farfan, you got to stand to that one, huh? <laughs> she put the bar very high. <laughs> okay. Today, surrounded by our friends and family who love us, I, will, I take you, Anna, as you are, loving you who you are now and who have you have yet to become. I promise to always be honest and open with you. I promise to hear you when you speak and give you help where it is needed. I promise to support and share in your curiosity, desires, and aspirations. 
I promise to live to our commitment to each other through kind words and simple acts that cannot be put into overall words each day. I promise to love you and grow with you, and I promise to put down roots and thrive with you. Though it is only in this moment that I speak these vows aloud, I promise to live all their words, and today, tomorrow, and all the days of our lives. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Now. Farsan Amir Latvian. Are you willing and able <laughs> to take this woman and Stefania Sevayus to be your wife, your lawful wedded wife before God, before this congregation, and forever until death do us part or until the coming of the Lord? Are you willing? Yes. You do. <laughs> Stephanie, are you willing to take this man, Farsana Min Latvian, to be your lawful wedded husband, to love and to cherish, just like you said. You know, I cannot add nothing else to your vows. <laughs> You've said it all. Are you willing to stay together in all the days of your life, the good and the bad ones, in health and in sickness? in prosperity or in adversity and forsaking all others are you willing to keep yourself for him only and always do you promise that to Farfan alright so put your right hand on this bible you first and now you on top of her your right hand there you go <laughs> yes because you have vowed to each other the most precious and solemn vows because you have done this before God who knows and understands and reads not only our words but our thoughts and intentions because you know that this love came from God and you have decided to obey his will to stay together forever and to respect and love each other. I, as a minister of the gospel, by the power given to me by the Holy Word of God, in accordance with the civil ceremony already performed, I declared you husband and wife what the Lord has united let no man put asunder shall we kneel down to ask the Lord to bless this marriage This lasso means that the two shall become one. And what the Lord has united, neither one of you or anyone else will separate. may bow your heads for the blessing. Our Heavenly Father, in this so precious and so wonderful time and place, we
we know that your presence is here with us. Here are two young men, women, young people that love you. They have declared their love to you first. You know, God, that they have consecrated your lives to you. Far, far, not too long ago, renewed his vows with Jesus. And so did Stephanie. And now they've come to do their vows before you, one for each other. We ask, Lord, that your blessing will be upon this new couple, this new Christian home and marriage. We ask all the blessings from above. We know that the devil is even now planning to see how he can bring them apart. But we also know that your holy angels will surround this couple as long as they walk honoring your name, seeking your kingdom first, and willing to do your will just as it is done in heaven. Give them everything they need. Not what they want, but what they need and what you know that they need. Prosper them. Not only physically, not only financially, but give them prosperity in their spiritual life that they may always be together just like they are today. Bless both families here represented that this union will be an example. Oh Lord, look at how many friends and family and cousins are here together. May they see in this couple an example that they can follow. They have parents that gave them the example. Bless both of these families as they both become part now of this new family. Thank you, because we know that everything we request in the name of Jesus, you said, you promised that if we do it in your name, it'll be given unto us. We pray the blessing of this home in the wonderful name of Jesus, our loving Savior. To him be the kingdom and the power and the glory today and forever. Amen. Amen.
Pastor Ken, who had the privilege of baptizing Farswan not too long ago to come and do the vows, or actually the ring exchanges. Please, your privilege. Thank you. Over 5,000 years ago, rings were first exchanged in ancient Egypt. They were typically made of uh, leather or woven reeds, and they stood for eternal life and everlasting love. Soon after, rings began showing up in Greek and Roman civilizations, with the Romans using rings as a sign of engagement for marriage. While wedding rings have come a long way since then, they still symbolize a lot of the same things, unity, love, and eternal bond. Farzan, I would like to ask you first, if you would repeat after me, and at the conclusion, uh, to slip uh, Anna's ring on her finger. So right now, just repeat after me, please. With this ring, I join my life to yours forever. I give you this ring as a reminder that this ring as a reminder that I will love and cherish you. I will love and cherish you. At all times in all places. At all times in all places. And in all ways. In all ways. With this ring I give you my heart. With this ring I give you my heart. From this day forward you will not walk alone. From this day forward you will not walk alone. My heart will be your shelter and my arms will be your home. My heart will be your shelter and my arms will be your home. You may now put the ring on Anna's fig a finger. And Anna, please, please repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love for you as a symbol of my love for you. Let it be a reminder that I am always at your side. Let it be a reminder that I am always at your side. This ring is a symbol of my eternal love. This ring is a symbol of my eternal love. And everlasting friendship. And everlasting friendship. And the promise of all of my tomorrows. And the promise of all of my tomorrows. This ring is a precious gift to you. This ring is a precious gift to you. As a sign that from this day forward. As a sign that from this day forward. You shall be surrounded and encircled by my love. You shall be surrounded and encircled by my love. Amen. Amen. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Well, you may receive your wife. <laughs> with the kiss. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Ceballos. No, Mr. and Mrs. Ceballos. I introduce to you, <laughs> your new son, Farfan. <laughs> I fooled you for a second, huh? <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Lafield, I introduce to you your new daughter, Anna Stephanie, and to you all, friends and family that love this couple, I introduce to you a new Christian marriage. Mr. and Mrs. And you know, <laughs> in Spanish, the girls don't lose their last name. <laughs> but in America, it is Mr. and Mrs. Farfan Lafayette. May the Lord 
bless you greatly. Blessings to both of you. Blessings.